I know who killed Bunny Folger. Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rec. If you haven't been here before, welcome. So I am super excited because as you guys know, episodes 1 and 2 of Only Murders in the Building have been released. They were released last Tuesday and I am really excited to talk about them. So that is what this video is going to be all about. If you are an Only Murders in the Building fan, we are going to be dissecting each and every episode as the season goes on to try and guess who the killer is and go through all the clues that I've pulled out. So if you are into Hulu's Only Murders in the Building, then definitely keep watching. If you are still catching up with season one, I have videos from season one. I will link them down below, as well as a video dissecting the trailer of season two. So I will link all of that down below. Definitely don't skip ahead if you aren't all caught up because this is gonna be spoiler central. Make sure to also follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be doing discussions and questions and Q&A's all about the show as well as maybe some like live watches you guys let me know what you want and it'll just be a fun time so I will link my Instagram down below as well if you want to check it out and just come hang out with me on a regular basis and with all that out of the way let's get into season two episode one of only murders in the building Okay, so I wrote all the notes from the episode on my phone, and if you see any clues from the episode or anything like that, drop them down below. We are a team. We are working together, and honestly, if I see a theory I really like, I will mention it in my next video and make sure to shout you out. Okay, so episode one. There was a lot of juicy stuff in episode one. Obviously, it's kind of setting the scenes. We're learning what happened um, at the very end of it season one you know when they got arrested it's just kind of a continuation so i didn't expect to find like the most clues i think last season we didn't actually even meet jan until episode six so i want to keep that in mind when we're trying to guess who the murderer is it's possible that we already know them because we already have this like scene set from last season but i just want to keep our eyes and ears peeled we're not going to find out all the information at the beginning. That's the whole point of the show. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that Mabel published her knitting needle discussion about how sometimes she dreams about like stabbing someone with her knitting needles. And I didn't realize that was actually in one of the episodes of their podcasts. And I think Dee plays it in episode one and says like, this was really suspicious. So we know that it was public information that Mabel sometimes dreamed about stabbing a man with her knitting needles, which, you know, makes sense that someone would go after Bunny with the knitting needle to frame Mabel. Next, we have a little tidbit of information. The officers let us know that Bunny was stabbed eight times. They don't have the weapon, which means that Bunny wasn't stabbed with the knitting needle eight times. It was just added afterwards. So eight times Bunny was stabbed. And we're like relatively sure based on other things that she was stabbed with a knife. Then we see a discussion where Charles is asking Dee if she's the one that texted them to get out of the building in season one. At the very end when they're all like racing out, like get out of the building, go, go, go. And she denies it, but you're not really sure if she denied it as like a, I'm supposed to be an officer of the law and I'm not going to tell you that I texted you to get out of the building. But if she actually didn't text them, who did? Who texted them saying, get out of the building and why was it because the texter knew that they were about to be framed and they were like you better get away from there was it a setup because they knew that they just dropped bunny off in mabel's apartment and they wanted them all to go into mabel's apartment and get mabel and find bunny there what was that about who texted them so we also know that they all have their motives for killing Bunny. At the end of season one, we see Mabel turn to Bunny and say, congratulations, you're the most hated bitch in the building now. We know that Oliver was writing notes to Bunny, threatening her, basically because she was trying to get him evicted. And Charles, his motive like isn't as obvious yet, but I'm sure it was something like dislike. The other thing that I think is important to note is that when the story was told of Bunny being stabbed in season one, it wasn't super clear like what happened. And I think part of it they're kind of trying to explain is like 
Mabel's trauma and she's like reliving this moment and trying to figure out what really happened. So she's giving us more and more information as the episode goes on. So the first thing we learn is that Bunny was actually already in Mabel's apartment when she was stabbed. So she stumbles out from like the right side of Mabel's apartment and she's like whispering and muttering and she's already been stabbed. So she was either stabbed in Mabel's apartment or stabbed and then like guided into Mabel's apartment. But I think it's more likely that she was actually stabbed in Mabel's apartment. That brings up multiple questions. Was Bunny snooping around in Mabel's apartment? Why was she in there? Did someone bring her in there? Under what guise? It's just really interesting and I'm sure we'll learn more as we go, but she was already in there. So what does that mean? It means that they either let themselves in with a set of keys, picking the lock, or they snuck in possibly with one of those, you know, behind the walls passageways that we've seen. We're not sure. Next thing I wanted to point out, which we might have already known, but just I thought was like an important little tidbit, is Bunny's full name is Bunny Folger. Yeah, Folger, like the coffee company. The best part of waking up is Folger's in your cup. Ding. We also know that there are a couple new characters being introduced into this season. Whether or not you like or dislike them, comment them down below. I have mixed feelings, but Mabel finishes her artwork. She's posted a photo of it on Instagram and people are going wild for it. They absolutely love it. And that's when we meet Alice who has like sent Mabel this video message ask, inviting her to come to an art show and basically like interested in networking and like possibly featuring her art in the gallery. So that's kind of just like how we meet Alice. Not so much of a clue, but just an introduction. We also know that Amy Schumer is in the show and she is playing Amy Schumer, which is like a weird breaking the fourth wall thing where she's like playing herself. So yeah. And they say that she's moving into Sting's penthouse, but she kind of doesn't seem to know that. Like she doesn't know who he is and she's like, oh, yeah, I'm totally moving in up there. So that seems kind of suspicious. Like, is she an Airbnb resident? You know, is, is Sting Airbnb in his apartment? Uh, is she not supposed to be there? Like, what's going on? Why, why, why is she there? She's also clearly trying to get the rights to the podcast. So I guess she can produce a show. I kind of love how this series bounces off of itself. Like it's a TV show about a podcast murder mystery and within the podcast murder mystery tv show they have someone being like i want to make a tv show about this so it's very like inception-y uh, i think it's funny and it kind of gives way to like the show knowing itself really well and i just think it's funny the next clue we have which like hasn't produced itself to be a clue yet but it's very interesting and i think something that's going to come up Later in the season is that Cinda Canning has created a new podcast called Only Murderers in the Building, going off of the Only Murders success that they had in the last season. Definitely trying to like profit off of it, you know, Charles, Oliver, and Mabel. Almost like planning out that they are going to be declared the murderers. So that's happening in their lives, that's in the back of their minds, and they're kind of peeved about it. I mean, I would be annoyed too. Like she's definitely trying to jump on the bandwagon and profit off of their success and that's always annoying so so in this episode we actually see a note that oliver has written to bunny threatening her saying dearest bunny you're dead to me much love oliver and we i think this is actually the first time we've ever seen oliver's handwriting it's very like scripty and loopy and pretty actually and it doesn't match any of the other handwritings that we have seen in this first season thus far. So it's interesting to me that it kind of disproves some of my old theories. Like Oliver probably wasn't the one who left the note on Jan's door because that handwriting is not matching anything. So that is something to keep in mind. We now have Oliver's handwriting. And this also means a couple of other things. There is a moment in the first season when they are in the closet recording the podcast and there's a note on the front that says like, keep out recording. And I thought that that was Oliver's handwriting and it actually is very similar to some of the other handwritings we have seen. But if it's not Oliver's, that handwriting has got to be Charles's 
because Mabel wasn't there, this handwriting does look like it matches some of the notes. So is this implicating Charles? Is this something that the set team just didn't notice and wasn't thinking? Whose handwriting is this? Is it Charles's? Why do these look really similar? Etc. Etc. That's the question. We also know as Mabel's starting to remember the night that Bunny said two things. She said 14 and then she said savage. And we learn these things separately. Like she comes up, stumbles over to Mabel, says 14, then lays on the ground and says savage. And while we know that Mr. Charles Hayden Savage lives on the 14th floor, so that is definitely implicating to Charles. And you see a moment where Mabel's like, oh no. Like she looks at Charles a little differently in her memory and she's like, did you stab Bunny? But I don't think that's true. I definitely think it's a mislead. But what it might relate to is Charles's father, which we will get deeper into a little bit later. We then meet Mrs. Gambolini, who is Bunny's parrot. And I'm sure she'll come back up in later episodes as being important. But we already know that she is repeating things that people have said in the past and even says, I know who did it, which like, whoa, okay. And she's mimicking Bunny's voice, so it's kind of a question of if the murderer was in Bunny's apartment or if someone said something that might have implicated them, that bird, if they heard it, might be able to repeat it. So that's really interesting. So then we see the Rose Cooper painting, which we learn is worth a fortune, possibly millions, with a man wrapped around a woman's leg. And according to Uma, it is missing and was there in Bunny's apartment the day before she died. We also learn that there is a secret elevator in Bunny's apartment in the closet of the room with the painting. So the question is, did someone know about it, take the painting out through that closet and elevator? Did they come in that way? Did they sneak in and sneak it out? You know, what's going on with this painting? Who took it? We also see that in the elevator, there are as follows. G, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So we know that there are more floors than this, but it seems as though the elevator stops at the 11th floor. Maybe the Arconia was only built to be 11 floors originally and they extended it. We don't know, but I think it's really interesting that the elevator doesn't go to all the floors. Why does it stop? So then we also discover that Oliver, while taking his threatening notes to Bunny, has accidentally taken another note from Bunny's apartment. And on the front, it says best wishes. It's like a card, but on the inside, it says Bunny Folger, I want that painting. And when we look at some of the other notes we have, I'm thinking that this signature kind of matches. For one, that handwriting looks scarily similar to one of the notes that Tim threw away in the garbage. I would say that that's the same handwriting as the, as the note that Tim threw away. So that's really suspicious. And I don't think it matches the note that was left on Oliver's door that says, end the podcast or I end you. Because the E in that note is, you know, very bendy. And the T's look different. It, they look similar, but they don't exactly match. And I think that's intentional. This also obviously lets us know that someone was interested in that painting. Somebody wanted it. Somebody wanted to steal it from Bunny. It just shows that there's some motive there, like someone's interested in that painting. And then we also learn later on that the painting is found in Charles's apartment and it's of Charles's father. And he is like, pretty certain that that's who it is. Like he immediately looks at it and is like, that's my dad and he's in the nude and he's on my wall. So that was episode one of season two. Let me know in the comments below if you guys found any clues or have any theories about who you think did it. Just based off of this episode alone and I'm going to talk about episode two in another video and it has a, like some more clues to even further develop this theory but it's really interesting so far the season is going great we've got introduced to some new characters i don't have any theories just based off of the first episode i think we're just like catching up but i do think that the note that was written and that tim kono threw away not necessarily written by him is the same person wrote that note who wrote 
this note to bunny so i think that's really interesting we're definitely seeing some carryover from last season i think that it's going to come more into play that bunny was stabbed eight times and thank you so much for joining me in today's video i hope you liked it i am desperately trying to hit a thousand subscribers once i hit a thousand i will be so much closer to youtube paying me for the content that i'm creating and honestly that would be the dream so if you could please help me out by subscribing if you want to that would be so awesome it like massively massively helps as well as liking commenting bell notification all those things help other people see my videos and then i'll be able to do more fun videos maybe like a merch review i've been really wanting to do that but i don't you know want to put all my own money into it with like nothing with like getting nothing back from it so yeah if you're interested in a merch review or a you know just like other little things that relate to the series but aren't necessarily a tv episode review definitely let me know down below i can do that so yeah thanks so much for joining me in today's video and i will see you in the next one